In today's video, what I want to talk to you about is DDoS and the SD-WAN and whether you actually need DDoS protection on your WAN circuits, because mostly I think it's bollocks. I was in a uh, conference yesterday and there was a bunch of telcos and managed service providers there and one of the things that really got me uh, thinking and then later angry was the, the idea that you need to have DDoS protection on your SD-WAN circuits. Now, it is logically possible that your SD-WAN circuit would be connected to the public internet and that somebody could actually DDoS attack that. But what's the actual risk of a DDoS attack against your WAN circuits? Um, how many of you, let's say, how many of you have internet connections today and how many have actually suffered a DDoS attack that took you down? How many of you have DDoS protection now? And why, you know, I would put it out there that most people who are deploying an SD-WAN network don't have DDoS protection, are unlikely to ever want DDoS protection and don't, simply don't need it. What makes me angry here is that these managed service providers are trying to say that, oh, you definitely need to upsell the customer to, have to get DDoS protection because their WAN might go down. We need to be realistic about these things. It's just not practical to keep going on and saying we need to spend more money to solve these problems. When it comes to evaluating your risk around a DDoS attack, let's go through some of the issues. Why would anybody target you? Are you actually at risk? Or are you going to buy a service that you don't need just because of a what if? Now remember, we've got to evaluate risk carefully here because I think that you're gonna just gonna be wasting money because you're unable to competently evaluate risk. Now, having multiple ISPs is actually the best answer here. If you've got an SD-WAN connection and you've got two or three internet providers, you, the chance of a uh, somebody footprinting or fingerprinting you and identifying all three for a given branch location is pretty unlikely. They might be able to target one, or if somebody accidentally targets your IP address, then yeah, they're going to take out one of the three. But at the same time, your SD-WAN appliance is going to block out that circuit. The second thing is, how much is the cost of a DDoS service? DDoS is really expensive services to get, and buying them in advance, you actually have to pay for a fixed amount of bandwidth, and then when and you have to do certain things to make it activate now it's quite difficult to do this it's expensive these people have waste a lot of time in the sales cycle analyzing your needs and blah 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 you'll spend you know hundreds of hours what you know writing purchasing order that should be a sign that this is not for you uh, unless you really really need it at the same time you can also go to a ddos provider click i need help right now and activate the ddos service now you should certainly make sure that you understand how that works. You should go out and talk to the DDoS provider, do some research, work out what would happen, and possibly write a document which says, I need to fix this, click this, do this, do this, do this, and be ready and prepared to do that in the, in the remote, remote unlikeliness that you actually get a DDoS to attack, you can now solve that. And all you need is a credit card to activate the DDoS cleansing if it becomes an issue. Now, there is one case where you might want to think about DDoS and that's on the head end circuit. So if you have a branch, a large branch network and they're all talking into a central data center and you've only got a couple of ISPs giving you say a gig or five, five gigs worth of bandwidth at the head office, remember uh, the bigger your ISP circuits, the much less likely it is that you're going to have DDoS. This is another, DDoS is another one of these times when more bandwidth is better. Remember, bandwidth is not scarce. Bandwidth is ultimately available. You should be out there wasting it like a drunken sailor after six months at sea. Your circuit should be over-provisioned so far because a faster bandwidth tail circuit into the internet will just improve everything. You just don't need quos if you've got a gig for 100 staff, right? And it can, if you're throwing out your MPLS circuits replacing or your DIAs and just replacing them with broadband or some sort of high speed, low cost, high speed internet, don't wait, don't try and nickel and dime yourself by just getting a couple and maximizing your savings. Waste bandwidth. Get three or four providers at the head end and get them all wired up so that if somebody DDoSes one of them or two of them, you've still got two more. And even then, if you've actually got four or five gigabits of bandwidth, you're still going to be 95th percentile. Most DDoS attacks do not get above a couple of hundred megs. Uh, it really requires something more serious. Somebody would have to go online and hire a stressor, you know, in the dark web or they would have to have much more serious types of activities to get a serious amount of traffic going. The trick here, more bandwidth. Evaluate your DDoS strategy carefully. You don't need one, is the first law. And if you think you need one, just have a plan to activate it uh, as you need. Don't pay money, don't, don't waste your employer's money on things that are, just aren't necessary. So there's some thoughts on SD-WAN over DDoS. Don't be suckered into paying money for something that you don't need from your telcos. Don't listen to them. Yes, they're gonna try and upsell you, but you as a customer, you should be really, really smart.
I'm Greg Farrow for the Packet Pushers. Thanks for listening. And if you've enjoyed this, get on over to packetpushers.net and listen to some of our podcasts. Thanks very much.